All right, on this next video here, we're going to look at the 2015 DCG higher level section A. So first up here was an oblique planes question, an oblique plane cutting a prism and it looks like square based prism there. So um, it said there on the orthographic on the right, complete plan elevation. Okay, so it's here and complete the pictorial and then get the true length of a diagonal on the cut surface. Okay, now I'm going to start though with the pictorial because um, I'm going to number this one, two, three, four, and up here then that's three on the ground and four and two just a bit to the side and one and over here here's one closest to the horizontal trace is one and two and three and four now i'm going to do the pictorial first because i think um we could use that then to look at answering the question there so step one there i'm going to just show there if we project in corner one bring that up that is the height that corner one is cut on the trace and i can bring that back out parallel and we now have the height the corner one is cut okay and i'm going to do the same there then for corner two and as usual i'm going to work a bit slower than um i could do just to try and turn it into a learning opportunity so I'm after bringing two in parallel to the horizontal trace, that is the key thing. Bring it up vertical and I'm going to project it back out. So this is going to give us the height of the cut above two, which is here. So I'll heavy that in. So I have the height of the mm. cut on one which is the lowest corner and here is two and three is the highest and four is coming back down there. So one joins to two there. Actually gonna just move my number three up here because that could be a little bit confusing because you can't see that back corner. So one joins to two, now the uh, already gave us three and four lovely so two goes to three three goes over to four and four comes back down here to one okay so that there is our shape and seeing as they use blue over here I'm going to color in this So colouring, good for understanding, not for an exam. Right. Now I know that they showed a multicolored top over here, but I am going to use yellow to color in that top as well, because I think it will uh, definitely help the understanding of that. Now, Obli Plains is a topic, again, I am not teaching the topic here as such. Yeah, I want to look at the, the principles behind it uh, a little bit, but uh, these questions are being answered on the basis that you would have already covered them with your with your teacher and were just sort of executing as opposed to, to learning about them. So 
I'm after putting the top in there now that sloping surface in yellow. Now, uh, generally you want to do the questions, do A first and then B and then C in an exam situation because the questions are set out to be answered that way. But uh, when we're doing this here, what we're going to do next here now is you're better off if you understand it from the pictorial. So we want to complete there now the elevation uh, of this. So what I want to do there is, and again, I'm going to do these points one at the time just to help understanding. Parallel to the horizontal trace, we want to bring in corner one just put an arrow on this here just to help people follow it which is what we did here we brought one in find the height on the trace so that is the height there and i can bring that is the height the corner one is cut which is here so i'm going to heavy that in that is the height the corner one is cut I just label the top of it there again to help and the same thing here then with two bring it in parallel to the horizontal trace bring that up that is the height the two is cut at and I'll just project up there double check so there's two Now, because 2 is at the front, I'm going to see 1 going to 2, so I can heavy that in. So 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, you know, same as the pictorial, they've already done that for us. And 1 goes to 4. And again, I'm going to just stick some colors on this there now. I'll just complete mm -hmm. that heavy edge down here. So there are, that's the one two edge, the two three edge. Now both of them are vertical surfaces. And then I'm just going to cover in the sloping surface there now. Now that is the cut surface there in, in yellow. Okay, so on the graphic, complete the plan elevation of the cut prism. That is done. Complete the pictorial. That is done. And then it says on the orthographic on the right, determine the true length of the shorter diagonal of the cut surface. So they just wanted the true length of the shorter diagonal. Okay. Now, because this is cut, just get red maybe for that there. Okay, the red should show up good. So, the shorter diagonal would be the 2 4 diagonal. If I draw it in here, even though it's hard to see, it would be that diagonal there, the 2 to 4 diagonal, because that's definitely going to be shorter than the one tree diagonal because that's from the lowest to the highest point so um the two four diagonal i'm going to draw it in in red here in the pictorial and i'm going to draw it in here now the two four diagonal in the elevation and in the plane okay so we want the true length of that because that is not a true length there at the moment because four is high. Just label the top of edge four and two is low. So it's sloping downwards from four to two. So there's, there's most things in graphics can be solved using rotation or an auxiliary. 
rotation for me would be quicker here if I leave four where it is just heavy that in a tiny bit so people can see so this all goes back to understanding cones okay so I'm going to just rotate corner two around the place there so I'm after moving two to over here so now I have rotated that red line over to here so that now if this is a person with a hat and left and right feet and they're looking in there they are now seeing the true length of that so we never moved four, but we have rotated two. We're not changing the height of it. So I bring two up to elevation. We didn't change the height of it. So that's where the end gets rotated around. And this here then going two, four. That there. I'm going to say TL for that is the true length. Now, the other way I could have done that is I, I could have taken uh, an auxiliary and projected out this way. And one other way, because I don't have room, I'm going to skip that. But one other way I could have done it is just by transfer of distances. I'm going to look at this one the real distance from two to four in plane is that. So if I step that up here and if I said, okay, that's two and four, the real distance on the ground, which is horizontal, that is how far away they are horizontally on the ground. Now, once I apply some heights to this then, the height of two is that height. The height of four off the ground is this height. So I'll just mark up vertical here. And the true length of two and four TL. Okay, now that is another way that I could have done it. So that was rotation, that was transferring distances, but both of them gives me the true length of the short diagonal of the cut surface. So that there is the first one looked at. Now E2, so you've got two parabolas here and so that's a parabola and this is a parabola and show, clear, show clearly how to determine the position of the points B and D and P and Q. So it says anyway draw the parabolas is the first thing. So we're going to have a parabola going like this and a parabola going like that for those curves. So really the construction uh, of one of them will do. So what I'm going to do there is just draw a line at any angle. Just mark four equal distances. I'm going to do the same down here. Just mark off there. So equal distances as well. So as you can see, I'm using four. Now, so from the fourth one, this is basically division of a line. So parallel lines. Now this is a junior cert construction, so I'm not going to be talking about this on the video.
So the fourth one to the end and then just parallel lines. Okay. So the side ones go to the vertex. And the bottom ones are just parallel. Okay, so middle to the middle there. And that's the three points for my curve. Now I could draw that curve, but while I have the points just clearly there, I'm going to very quickly do some axial symmetry here to transfer those distances over to for the curve on the other side which is the mirror opposite so that's my first point And again, I can do the same here now. I can project these down. Probably won't need the third one. And again, First one, which is the same for the other side. Second one. Okay, no, it's great that I've worked out. Um, being right on this line here so I don't have to take any further points because if that wasn't the case I would maybe have to take uh, a third point down here to draw the curve to have a definite place to draw that curve to because you can't be just guessing the end of it but that worked out uh, very conveniently so we'll just draw this uh, parabola here so I can just get it a feel for where that curve is going when it's a fairly big curve. All right. Okay, so that is our double parabola sorted out there. Now it said there, okay, so it said there then, show clearly how to find uh, B, D, P and Q. So B and D are down here. Now again there, like if, if, uh, if there was any issue with, with them, Depending on how far, as I said, it kind of worked out okay. But if I wanted to find an exact location, how far below is it? And I would step that distance above and come across. And that would have found me the exact positions down below. But as I said, it just worked out anyway. So uh, that was good. So... Those points there, here's B and D and P and Q. Then it says draw the circle tangential to the curves at P and Q respectively. So basically 
what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking for a, a normal okay so a normal is perpendicular to the tangent at that point but when we so t for tangent in for normal but the normal is going to give us the center of that so basically it's the construction for a tangent to a parabola is what we're looking for and again i i mentioned this before in a previous video about that the tangent for a parabola when and we have the focal points here so like this is a, a focal point and if i wanted the tangent for here i join to the focal point i join to the other focal point that is at infinity just put an arrow there that goes on to infinity i'm going to be bisecting that angle and that there is the normal and perpendicular would be a tangent so that's the that is the reasoning behind it so i'm going to put this in in red just to highlight a bit so one side will do because it's symmetrical so i'm joining q to the focal point and this is going to the other focal point that is at infinity so just put the infinity symbol on that just to say it goes on forever so that's parallel to the axis that there is parallel to the axis or horizontal in this case so i want to bisect that angle on my compass so again don't try and do this too small okay and this here is the boy sector and when i extend that bisector in i'm going to put a, a just a little arrow on that to show where it's going that there must be the center and the radius so once i set my compass to that and touching point q hopefully And there is our tangent circle to the two curves. A tree, so a graphic shows a sculpture based on intersecting planes, and the drawing shows the elevation and plan of two of the intersecting planes ABC. A is the apex BC, BC, and ADE okay so you can see there from d into e is here so the line of intersection is where the line on the ground there d e crosses the line on the ground b c so that's the end of the line of intersection there let's just get a color for this So the line on the ground where BC crosses DE is a point on the ground and the other end so that there is the line of intersection and because that's on the ground just mark there and I'm bringing that up and the elevation of that is here and I'm just going to call that X so that would be point X over here this point here 
Okay, so it said the plane elevation of line will get the dihedral angle between the planes. So the step one there is to get a true length of the line of intersection. So I'll just set up an XY line parallel to the line of intersection. About here. So that's my new X. Y1, I'm going to project perpendicular to that. So. Okay, now the nice thing about this question, I guess, is that uh, all the points are on the ground there, really, except for A. So again, the rule with auxiliary views is I'm projecting from the plane, so from the last XY line backwards. That's where all my distances are coming from. So this is actually quite straightforward. Um, well, I forgot to bring X. which is also on the ground. So I'm going to leave X in the color that I had drawn it in. So X there, whoa. And the other points here, I'm going to just label them as well. So there's C, B, that's E, and this one here at the very end is D, and they all go to A as well. And finally there now, that there is the true length of the line of intersection, so I want to look along that. Set an XY line at 90 degrees to that. So again, I'll just keep it pretty close to that. Set an XY line there. So I'm projecting all of them up there, and that's my X, Y, 2. Now again, and we have seen this in the other videos, the reason I'm going to get a point view of this true and turn of the line of intersection is because when I measure back there from to point X, that distance, but when I measure back to A, same distance, so when I look along AX, that is going to give me a point view of the line of intersection. So really now I just need one point from each plane, really one point from each triangle. So I'm going to just take, I'm projecting from here, last XY line back. I'm going to take the bigger distances because they're easier to measure. So there's my distance for D. And here's my distance for B. Now again, just to prove it, that if I take all of them, There's E and finally C. There's if I have a dihedral angle here now, a point view of the line of intersection, 
this should work out giving me an X. So there's the, that is the edge view there of one plane, which is E, A and X are there, D, A, D, and over here the other one then, which is B, C, A. So there's our dihedral angle, and I will just mark that as well. There it was. Okay, so that is the first part of it done. And the second one there is to determine the traces of the plane uh, ADE. Now look, really you've got this in the pictorial. Uh, I'll use red for this, but this is it here. That DE line here, that is the horizontal trace where that plane goes through the horizontal plane. So the trace there, that is the horizontal trace. I will just extend it out this way a little bit. And... Horizontal trace. No, we need to find a point on the vertical trace. So what I will just do there then is just go similar to the uh, first question here on the oblique plane question. I'm going to go just parallel. I'm going to project A in parallel to the horizontal trace. That keeps the height the same. And this is the same horizontal line that I just drew down there. That's the elevation of it. That there is a point on the vertical trace. So a vertical trace, horizontal trace. Okay, so A4 there, just having a look at this here, it is saying there that there's two pylons representing skew lines, basically the same thing. Two pylons, two skew lines, A, B and C, D. So it says determine the projections of the shortest horizontal distance. Now that is important because shortest horizontal distance is different to shortest distance. But uh, the first step is the same anyway. So what we want to do is from the end of one of the lines, so I'm going to randomly pick C, go parallel to AB and horizontal from the other end of the line. So I just put an arrow on this because I just drew that there a second ago. So giving me a point X. So I now have a triangular plane here, but CX is parallel to AB. And then I'm going to project X down to plane and do the exact same parallel line again. So from C in plan parallel to AB in plan. So the angle for AB is here. I want to go parallel from C. Okay, so that's parallel to A, B from C and let's bring, and bring down X. And where those lines cross, which is here, that's my point X in plan. And X to D is the angle that I was looking for. So I'm going to draw X to D here. Okay, that there, that line is a true length because it's horizontal in elevation. So that is a true length line in plan, which is going to give me a edge view of the CDX and a, the two lines in AB and CD will be parallel. 
So this is the angle to look at. So I'm going to just stick an X Y line. I'm going to put it back here now, just to condense the space. So A and B, C and D. No, always the rule projecting from whatever view you're projecting from it's from the last x y line back is the distances so my distances here i'll start with d so that's d and b I'm going to just mark vertically down here now because I don't like taking heights without uh, knowing where directly below it is. So I've taken D and B so I'm going to get C. These, looking at that particular angle, should show these lines as parallel. So I'll just index them there, that's A and B, C and D down here. So B Is this angle CD should be parallel if it's not there's something wrong you need to go back and check if these don't work out being parallel so there are my two lines a B C D no if I wanted the shortest distance I would be looking at 90 degrees to that parallel but in this case, I'm looking for the shortest horizontal distance. So I want to look parallel to the ground. Okay, so that's a key thing to be careful about that. So I want to look parallel to the ground, which is the XY line. So this is my angle for projecting. I'll set up an XY line here. Again, keep your XY lines close to your views just to keep the question from going all over the place so we're projecting up d b a c and again remember the rule projecting from here last x y line back so c is the shortest distance And B D and finally E Okay. A, C, B, and D. A goes to B, C goes to D. That there is the point we were looking for. Okay, so I mark this in in red. So when I project this back, parallel. So the shortest horizontal distance is here. Because it's coming from there. So that is my shortest horizontal distance. And again, I would be in favor of when we took 
our heights. Like if I show you the height for A, that's where the heights came from here. So I am a fan of just taking this the height of the shortest mm -hmm. horizontal distance back, which is there, and I can step that up. That is the height of the shortest horizontal distance, which I'm putting in in red. There is the shortest horizontal distance. And I will bring that down to plan as well. So it's here on AB. And it's here on CD. So that shortest horizontal distance is here. Now I know you, if you projected that back and projected this point back, you should get the same thing and when you bring it up. But it is often the case that if you're any mill or two out here, which is easy to for that to happen, then your line is at a slight angle here and then it's not horizontal and you might be saying oh no is this wrong so that's why I just think it's more accurate like another way I could have done this is if I measure that and said okay well that's 16 mil exactly above the ground so that there is 16 mil above the ground um, to take that height now finally determine an indication degrees the true angle between this horizontal line and the vertical plane. And again, this is, I suppose, spatial ability really of being able to just understand the basics of the subject. So the horizontal line and the vertical plane, I am going to just extend, shoot this line in. The vertical plane is rising up here. We're looking down from above. And if I extend that in, that horizontal line hits the vertical plane and that there is the angle that's being looked for. The angle between that horizontal line and the vertical plane rising up there from the horizontal plane. So there we go.